Turn your eyes, O God, our shield, and look on the face of your anointed one. One day within your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. Good morning. We offer this morning's Mass of Tuesday, the 20th week of Ordinary Time for Ed Osolinski. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Jesus. your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, and what I have done, and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary and the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me, son of man, say to the prince of Tyre, thus says the Lord God, because you are haughty of heart, you say, a God am I, I occupy a godly throne, in the heart of the sea, and yet you are man and not a god, however you may think yourself like a god. Oh yes, you are wiser than Daniel, there is no secret that is beyond you. By your wisdom and your intelligence you have made riches for yourself. You have put gold and silver into your treasuries. By your great wisdom applied to your trading, you have heaped up your riches. Your heart has grown haughty from your riches. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, because you have thought yourself to have the mind of a God, therefore I will bring against you foreigners, the most barbarous of nations. They shall draw their swords against your beauteous wisdom. They shall run them through your splendid apparel. They shall thrust you down to the pit, there to die, a bloody corpse in the heart of the sea. Will you then say, I am a god? When you face your murderers, no, you are a man, not a god. Hand it over to those who will slay you. You shall die the death of the uncircumcised at the hand of foreigners. For I have spoken, says the Lord God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It is I who deal death and give life. It is I who deal death and give life. I would have said, I will make an end of them and blot out their name from men's memories, had I not feared the insolence of their enemies, 
feared that those foes would mistakenly boast. On our hand won the victory. The Lord had nothing to do with it. For they are a people devoid of reason, having no understanding. How could one man rout a thousand, or two men put ten thousand to flight, unless it was because their rock sold them, and the Lord delivered them up? Close at hand is the day of their disaster, and their doom is rushing upon them. Surely the Lord shall do justice for his people. On his servants he shall have pity. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Jesus Christ became poor, although he was rich so that by his poverty you might become rich. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Amen, I say to you, it will be hard for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I say to you, it is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished and said, who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For men this is impossible, but for God all things are possible. Then Peter said to him in reply, We have given up everything and followed you. What will there be for us? Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, that you who have followed me in the new age, when the Son of Man is seated on his throne of glory, Will yourselves sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel? And everyone who has given up houses, or brothers, or sisters, or father, or mother, or children, or lands, for the sake of my name, will receive a hundred times more, and will inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, who can be saved? For men, it's impossible. For God, all things are possible. Jesus speaks about detachment. Right? He speaks about how it's easier for a camel to fit through the eye of the needle than someone who's rich to enter the kingdom of God. He's saying this in reference to that rich young man we heard about in yesterday's gospel, who obviously was seeking out Jesus, obviously had a desire in his heart for God, but he had so many things, so many riches that, that he couldn't part with them and went away sad. The eye of the needle, right, is the, the door, the lower door of a the big gate to the city that in order to enter the gate you have to bend down and, and enter in. So a camel, in order to get in, would have to have all the stuff on its back unloaded in order to get the camel through that, that low door, the <clears throat> image of how we have to shed ourselves of, of so many things in order to enter into God. 
Now we know that Jesus is not saying that things and money are bad. We know that's not true because we need things and money, right? Money can accomplish a lot of good for people, but it's our attitude, right, toward it. Scripture doesn't say money is the root of all evil. Scripture says the love of money is the root of all evil. Greed, when it becomes a God for us, when it becomes before God. The apostles couldn't understand how a person who's rich, it's difficult to be saved. They looked upon people who had rich and had all the best things in life as greatly blessed by God. That's the way we tend to think and the world tends to think. Scriptures in the Psalms, one Psalm I love is, in his riches, man lacks wisdom. He is like the beast that is destroyed, right? In his riches, man lacks wisdom. The wisdom of the world is to be as rich and powerful and have as much pleasure and <clears throat> honor and esteem of others as we can possibly accumulate. Wisdom of God is to, is to submit ourselves to his will, to realize that for man it's impossible to be saved, but for God all things are possible. To submit ourselves completely to the will of God. St. John Paul II always talked about the law of the gift, right? We're made in the image of God, that means we're made for love, we're made not for self-seeking, but for self Giving, and the more we give ourselves away, the more we find what we're looking for. In his riches, man lacks wisdom. The wisdom of the world is that to be rich is to be happy. The wisdom of God is to be poor in spirit, is to be truly happy. We see the wisdom of God right up there on that cross, right as St. Paul said. That cross to the world is sure, sheer folly and failure and weakness. But in the eyes of those who, are, who believe, it is the wisdom of God. Jesus on that cross, St. Thomas Aquinas said, if you really want to be happy, then look at Jesus on that cross and love what he loved and despise what he despised. Up there on that cross, Jesus despised the wisdom of the world, right? What does the world think we need to be happy? Four things, Thomas Aquinas said, money and power and pleasure and honor. Up there on that cross, Jesus had no wealth, no money whatsoever, stripped of his very clothes. He had no power in a worldly sense whatsoever. He couldn't even move, pinned to that cross by those nails. He had no pleasure in the eyes of the world. He was in bitter agony and suffering. He had no honor or esteem of others that were mocking him, laughing at him, and spitting at him. Yet he, he despised all of that worldly wisdom. And what did he love in that cross? It was to do his Father's will. To submit himself entirely to the will of his Father out of love for you and for me. That is holiness, right? To empty ourselves and to be filled with God. That's how we approach this altar at every Mass. We need to be emptied of our ego, of our pride, of our sins, of our selfishness, so that Jesus himself, body and blood, soul and divinity, can come into our bodies and hearts and souls and fill us with God himself. That's the whole ebb and flow of the spiritual life, emptying and being filled, being filled with God to such a point that we begin to overflow, overflow with love for God and for others. And then the peace of God can at last come to our world when we are first filled with it in our hearts and in our souls. Together we lift up our hearts in prayer to God who is always present with us. 
For Pope Francis, may God give him strength as he shares Christ's message with the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the salvation of the world, may the love of God through the witness of the church touch every heart on earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have suffered trials of any kind because of global pandemic, may the Lord look graciously upon their needs and grant them relief and consolation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of this faith community, may the Holy Spirit continue to inspire us in charity and compassion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Reverend Michael Cedro, and for Ed Osolinsky, the intention of this Mass, may they be welcomed into the light of God's kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own personal intentions, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving and merciful God, we put our trust in you and ask that you hear our prayer and grant us what we truly need according to your will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God with humble spirit and contrite hearts that we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, of my iniquity and cleanse me. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the all of his holy church. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very Son, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right in us. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your Word, through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, 
the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Timothy our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we fear to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look, not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with you. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my life, but only a Savior word in my soul. For those with us at home, we make an act of spiritual communion. By Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you were already there, I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conformed to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you, your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Enjoy this beautiful day.